Ah, the Church of England, the source of Anglicanism. The influence of the Church has been massive. After the Catholic Church and the Eastern Orthodox Church, Anglicanism is the next largest communion worldwide, with 85 million people counted among the Anglican denominations. And of those 85 million people, 26 million are in the namesake Church itself. That's right, 26 million baptized members of the Church of England. And there's 16,000 church buildings throughout England to accommodate them, although there's only 12,500 active parishes. And we're just talking England, too, not the whole UK, because in Scotland it's a separate church, the Scottish Episcopal Church, and the church in Wales is also separate, along with the Church of Ireland, which services Northern Ireland. So 12,500 parishes in England for the 26 million members. That's 2,080 members per church on average. So the church is booming, right? Well, here's the bad news. Almost everyone doesn't show up. Yes, there are members, officially, but in reality the Church of England has seen much better days. We're going to take a look at the 2019 statistics, and they aren't good news. And this is before the COVID-19 pandemic. When things are back to normal, we can revisit and see what additional damage has been done. Let's start with the median church. Take the church right in the middle, the 6,250th by size out of 12,500. How many people do you think are in attendance on a given week? There's around 6,000 churches bigger than this one and 6,000 churches smaller than it. Well, here's the answer. That church has an average weekly attendance of 31 people. You heard me right. 6,250 of the congregations in the mighty Church of England have 31 or fewer people in average weekly attendance. And how about the number of children in attendance in the median church, where 6,250 churches have more children and 6,250 have fewer? There's two children in that church. Half of Church of England congregations have two or fewer children. That's who will be attending in the next generation. In other words, nobody will be attending in the next generation in all likelihood. That's reflected in the bottom 25% of churches which report an average of zero children in attendance. Fewer than one out of 10 babies born in England are baptized into the church. And when asked their religion, the British Social Attitude Survey found for those over age 75, 33% of UK residents said they were Anglican. While for those between 18 and 24, the amount who claimed Anglican was just 1%. The median church sees one marriage or service of prayer and dedication each year, and four funerals. That's a decrease in marriages or services of prayer and dedications over the decade since 2009 of 42%. And is it good news that funerals are down 31%? Or is it just the fact that when you have fewer people, there's fewer to die? Here's the reality. Though there are 26 million members out of the England population of 56 million, only 854,000 people attend in a given week. Seven years ago, in 2015, former Archbishop of Canterbury, Lord Carey, warned that unless there was a major shift, the church was just one generation away from extinction. 75% of churches have 74 or fewer people in weekly attendance, and churches with 185 people are in the top 5%. Since 1990, every diocese in the church has declined, with one bright exception, that of London. David Goodhue, vicar of St. Barnabas Church in Middlesbrough, says of this, London stands out. It has grown when every other Church of England diocese has shrunk. Some dioceses, like Manchester and Bath and Wells, have nearly halved in the last 30 years. Some have shrunk, but by only 20 to 30 percent, like Ely and Southwark. Indeed, London is the only Anglican diocese in either the USA or England to have grown in the last 30 years. You do not need to be Albert Einstein to see that based on pre-COVID trends, in another 30 years, some Church of England dioceses will cease to exist. Many reasons have been given for the decline, but an interesting comparison point is made by Goodyear, looking at other churches in the UK and seeing which ones are growing and which ones are shrinking. In the three decades from 1990 to 2019, Orthodox Church membership went from 185,000 to 475,000. Pentecostalism grew from 147,000 to 380,000. Methodists declined from 447,000 to 186,000, and Presbyterians went from 1.24 million to 622,000. Goodhue says, the primary common denominator is theology. Those trimming faith to fit in with culture have tended to shrink, and those offering a full-fat faith, vividly supernatural, have tended to grow. 
This is as true of the ultra-liturgical Orthodox as it is of the ultra-informal Pentecostals. He then adds another reason. Alongside theology, a key factor is ethnicity. Put crudely, churches appealing to what the census enumerators call the white British are shrinking, and those which appeal to a wider ethnic mix are growing. The new churches, Orthodox and Pentecostal churches, are far better at this than Anglicanism, but it need not be that way. Goodhue formally recognizes the issues and provides an optimistic hope alongside a warning. The church in England will not die. Significant chunks of it are vigorous, even as significant chunks of the Church of England face oblivion in the coming decades. Most Church of England dioceses have seen deep decline in recent decades. A handful of dioceses have suffered smaller but still significant decline. Only one diocese, London, has grown. Some dioceses will be operatively defunct by 2050 on the basis of current trends. Others will still exist but be radically smaller. Only one looks robust. Unless something radically changes, large swaths of England will see Anglicanism effectively disappear by 2050. Mary Harrington writes in the article, England will miss our church when it's gone. When we returned to church last Sunday for the first time since lockdown, our daughter was the only child there. In fact, she was the only person under 40. This is par for the course. There are never any teenagers. 20-somethings turn up sometimes, but generally only for a few weeks as the bands for their wedding are read. Harrington strikingly states in her article how the church is being replaced in society. It's hard to make a case for political legitimacy when only a handful of retirees turn up every Sunday. This isn't to say that faith is disappearing from Britain. As I argued recently, religiosity is growing weirder and more vigorous, but it's no longer finding expression in our established church. I'm not optimistic about that changing. Towards the end of lockdown, a group of people finally agreed that something moral mattered enough to risk spreading infection by gathering in public. But that group wasn't a church. It was Black Lives Matter. Whatever you think of that development, Movements which change the world are those whose members are willing to risk death for their cause. In Britain right now, Christianity isn't on that list. Internal documents in the church report that an additional 20% of members that stopped attending the Church of England during the pandemic may never return. What's being done to resolve the issues? Archbishop of York Stephen Cottrell, the number two man in the church behind the Archbishop of Canterbury, has proposed plans for 10,000 layperson-led house church-style communities, with a focus on young people. In 2004, a small UK congregation was frustrated that they weren't reaching children and started a program called Messy Church. This was a monthly outreach to people who don't attend church, a free community family fun event with crafts, celebration, and a Bible theme and lesson. Now, over 2,800 churches in the UK offer Messy church, and it spread to the U.S. too, among many denominations. The Times reported that between 2017 and 2020, the Church of England spent £240 million in a renewal and reform plan to arrest the decline, designed to attract new worshippers, support churches in deprived areas, and found new congregations. Although new congregations were founded, the decline continued. While work is being done, or at least attempted, and some see silver linings, others see the Church of England as a thing of the past. Linda Woodhead, professor of sociology of religion at Lancaster University, gives her verdict in her article, How the Church of England Lost the English People, saying, The decline of the Church of England is now so relentless, and the profile of the nuns so youthful, that the trend will not be reversed. The nuns are the ones having children, and the Christians are the ones dying out. More and more people neither know nor care about the Church of England. For lay people like me, old enough to do both, feelings are often mixed. I used to care for the Church's survival. Now I am more concerned about how its cultural riches, including buildings and traditions, can be reconnected with society. I can see glimpses of the answer in new and creative initiatives and reappropriations arising completely independent of Church structures. I believe this is now our best hope. Not that church will reconnect with society, but that parts of society will reconnect with some of the better parts of the old church and leave the rest to die. Bishop of Islington Rick Thorpe reports more positively, statistics cannot measure the impact that churches have. St. Dionys Church in Parsons Green, London, partnered with their local NHS trust to pack and deliver PPE at the height of the pandemic. They contribute to a food bank, help people in debt, work with families and children who are struggling, and provide support and care for those with mental health issues. In Pimlico, in central London, a new mission initiative called Heaven's Gate meets on the Churchill Gardens estate to reach out to local people 
people and youth. In Brixton, St. John the Evangelist Church works closely with their local council and other churches and charities to reduce knife crime in the area. The Love Your Neighbor Initiative, a national network of churches and charities, serve an estimated 1 million meals a month, support 16,500 people with debt advice, and last Christmas delivered three quarters of a million Christmas boxes. The list of such programs showing love, kindness, and practical support could be replicated in nearly every church in the country. Numbers cannot really capture such a force in the life of our nation. So even though there is decline in church attendance, the picture is far more nuanced than the headlines might suggest. What is striking is that churches of all kinds are growing, the more traditional churches and the new kinds of churches. This is the mixed ecology of church in action. There remain huge challenges in these times to communicate the message of the love of God in Jesus Christ more effectively. But there are also many signs, some of them dramatic, that the church is alive, growing and having an impact. Reports of its demise have been greatly exaggerated.